At this moment, we need to tell you that the Bush family is in the air, heading to Texas for a final ceremony. The body of President Bush will be welcomed home to his final resting place in Houston, the family plot at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. It's been several days of iconic moments as the nation remembers President Bush, and one of the most poignant came yesterday when fellow member of the greatest generation, Senator Bob Dole, who ran against George Bush for president in 1980 and 88, stood up with some help and paid his final respects, one World War II hero to another. Dole suffered injuries in the war that left him mostly immobile on his right side. He saluted with his left hand. He still managed to do that to salute a political rival who became a friend. Every living president, from Presidents Trump to Carter to Clinton to Obama, every former vice president, everybody's spouses in, atten uh, in attendance. Just about every Bush family member, both immediate and extended, listened as Bush 41 was eulogized as someone who lived life at full throttle. Prince Charles, heir to the British throne, attended, as well as King Abdullah of Jordan, all paying their respects. And longtime Bush friend Ed Rogers served as former deputy assistant to President George Herbert Walker Bush. You know, you could have been there, Ed, but you gave your <laughs> ticket away, and that was a very generous thing to do. Tell us who you gave it to. Well, I gave it to Haley Barber's son, oh. uh, they, so they could go together, and I did commentary over on PBS. And tell us about sort of your thoughts when you saw all the crowd gathering and paying respects to such a great war hero and a great man. Well, it was a solemn moment. There were some powerful movements today with, with the end of George Bush's eulogy, the Bob Dole salute. Mm. Uh, Scully broke through to the American consciousness. It, it, it's George Bush's last act of selflessness and generosity was what he's given us for the last day, a serious focal point for the nation. It's been sad but inspiring at the same time, moments and hours really filled with dignity and with poise, remembrance of the character traits that, 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 were, that, that were, are sometimes lacking that we so admire in George Bush. And so it's done the nation, I think, a lot of good. I think it did a lot of good here in Washington brought people together, sort of in the same way inaugurations bring people together, Democrats, Republicans, leaders from out in the state all come to town. But even that is the celebration, partially, of an election, mm -hmm. election victory. This was something more solemn, something more personal, something a little deeper. And I think it served a good purpose. He was always one who said that just because he had opponents didn't mean he looked at those opponents as enemies. Tell us, you having been one of his top aides, your, your best memory of him, and, and you would see presidents when you're an aide that close to them at both their best and their worst. Well, I don't know that there's a best moment. There were a lot of good moments, but one thing about President Bush, his workplace was healthy. A lot of leaders, when they get to the top, they rule through intimidation. They don't like people to tell them no. They don't like people to challenge their biases. George Bush was a confident leader. He was comfortable with himself and with the decisions that he would make. If you pestered him too much, he'd tell you, you pestered me too much and to move on. <laughs> but again, he was a confident leader. You learned a lot from just being in proximity to man, to, to being in proximity to the man. You learned a lot about the world. You learned a lot about management. You learned a lot about human nature and yeah. He's a great example. He's a great role model. There, there's, there's not enough studying and, and history that can be read about there, George Bush. I think there will a good be. Purpose. I think there will be now. And, and Ed, I had a chance. I never got to meet him, but I covered ah. his um, election, the, the Quail Bush election against uh, Clinton Gore. But I went to Kenny Bunkworth this summer on vacation, and I stood across, and I took a picture of that, that Bush compound, and it, I, he was alive then, and I sort of felt how nice it must be to look out at that vista and to, to see all of the beauty of America and, and all the difficult aspects that he had dealt with as well. And now we see the memorials to it. I'm sure he would appreciate you having in your moment be able to give that ticket to somebody else and, and say well, kind things about him. Well, I hope so. But, but Walker Point, Kenny Bumport, Maine, 
was a special place for him. Oh, yeah. It's where he went to reflect. It's where he went to recharge. It's where he went to spend time with his family. So it really is an iconic place for Americans, and there's a lot to learn. And a good, another good example to follow in terms of how Bush used his homestead, how he used Walker, gotcha. Walker Point.